song if you're not. Two of us riding nowhere, spending someone's start would be this house. So this house, um, it's kind of iconic just for all the grandchildren. We came here for all of our holidays. It's a great thrill to be at this event and this uh, tribute to this house and this family. I think it was almost exactly 50 years ago that I first came here because I had become friends with Phil in, in high school or maybe even junior high. And the reason I, I wanted to talk about this place because meeting Russ and uh, she was just one of the coolest people. <laughs> and I was not cool. And when by high school, when I got somehow to be the kind of friend that would be invited to this house and sit at this table and listen to her father and see the students all talking, it was just like the breakthrough into the coolness. And when I was 12, my parents uh, surprised me with a ticket to San Francisco. So I got to visit them in this house. And Austin tells me that uh, at that time I was the only one other than her mother who she would allow to hold her. <laughs> There's a picture of me holding her on the front steps. One of my first memories of, of Dr. Krieger, of Bill Krieger, I, was, I phoned here one night for Phil I guess around dinner time, which it turned out was a big sin in the Krieger household. And uh, I asked for Phil and his dad, without covering up the phone, I hear him yell, Phil, it's one of your friends who doesn't eat dinner. <laughs> awesome. The best party I think I've ever been to was at this house, and it was a Halloween party, costume party. And Russell and our friend Jody, who's no longer alive, and I spent ages upstairs trying on our costumes and doing silly things. But the band that's playing outside today, Zru Vogue, played at that party. And it was, the Kriegers just let this whole house be taken over. And it was, everybody really stray, strove to, to make the best costumes ever. And it went on into the night, and it was artistic, and it was fun, and it was glorious. If anybody wants to say anything at some point, we have these microphones. I don't have a speech or anything to say, really. I'm a, I'm a teacher. One thing teachers do is uh, facilitate. And so I have a sort of an idea. Gabe kind of gave it to me just now. One of the things that was really illuminating about uh, our mother in her last four years is, is that it combined with uh, dementia, and you'd tell her again and again what you'd been telling her, and she didn't remember that your daughter, you know, did this, or that your daughter's name was that, um, but she would come up with one-liners, zingers. <laughs> and I think you all know what I'm, all of you who were who are around during the four years, I uh, can't think of one, but I bet you Phil, and maybe some others, might be able to think of a zinger that Nana, or mom, uh, and Nancy, came out with uh, during those years when, you, you know, out of her dementia, these fish hooks would come right out and slash you. And one time after Dad had died, uh, we were talking, we were doing puzzles, as we do there, and Dad... <laughs> wasn't there, so she took the TV controller and turned my volume down with the TV controller. Uh, she pointed it at me and it, it worked. So uh, this is a very cool thing. When someone comes up to speak, they're going to get from everybody else a thing that cost me $5,000 to learn. It's called the whoosh, and I'm going to show you on my brother how it works. He's going to receive it and my directions. Right, 
<laughs> so on the count of three, after you know how to do this, you're going to do what I'm doing. And my brother Phil is going to receive a whoosh. And it goes like this, whoosh. You're going to do it from your heart. He's going to receive it in his. On the count of three, okay, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then we're going to go. Yes, that, that's our thanks for his considering about the uh, vote. One, two, three. Whoosh! Thank you. My name is Steve. About 50 years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Phil Krieger in junior high, I think. And we became fast friends, and, and shortly after that, he invited me to this place. And from the very first moments, the, the whole Krieger family, Nancy and Bill and Phil and all his siblings, were incredibly warm and, and inviting. and. I don't think they ever really knew or cared very much who was in the house. You know, you'd be fed if you showed up at that big table at dinner time. Absolutely. It was very cool. Very long story about a cat, but it, it turns out there was a cat that eventually ended up living here, Isaac, and he wasn't liked by the by by Nancy or by the by anyone else in this house. He was kind of Igu, yes, and this was very much a dog house, and Isaac was not was not really part of the family, but we loved Isaac, so we took him. But over the years, Isaac did lots of horrible things, and Nancy, every time she heard a horrible thing that Isaac would do, she would say, "Well, well, he just has to be put down." <laughs> and uh, and Isaac got to got to live. To the, to the ripe old age of 15. But towards the end, he had developed this, this, uh, this tumor in his leg, and, uh, and it, it was tough going. We, had, we were living in Colombia. We had to take him and bring him back. And at, at one, one of these, I think it was the first trip we took to Colombia to live, and we were figuring out the whole quarantine thing. What do you do with a, with a cat? You take him overseas, what's it gonna be like? And we were talking about this to, to Nancy, you know, we're, we want to see how to take how to take Isaac to Colombia. You know, there are these legal issues and whatever. And she said, she said uh, in one of the classic Freudian slips, she said, "So you're planning to take Isaac alive to Colombia?" <laughs> Aunt Nancy was always full of things to tell me, like the latest labor-saving gadget she had found so that she could do the housework that she hated so much more easily. Usually at the dinner table there's a lot of talk that someone of the age of eight is unable to actually contribute much to. Yeah. There's a lot of politics talk that I, you know, was, I didn't have anything to clever to say to. Um, <laughs> that grandpa would facilitate, my dad would join in, everyone else would join in, and I had nothing to say. But Nan would always look over at me because I think she knew I'd be sitting there, you know, bored out of my mind. And she would make these little faces at me. She would like kind of like she'd have this little this little face, and I would like I would like love that. She would make this like little face that you know would be good for someone my age. And I'd bring the dogs over. We lived just you know about a half a mile that way. And I'd bring the dogs over, and they would play with um, Trina and Radagast. Radagast was a, 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 a dachshund, and Trina was a shepherd. And so we would come over here and hang out, the dogs would hang out, and Russell and I would hang out. And then I went off to college. And when I came back to visit after going off to college, Nancy told me that the dogs kept coming over here to play with the other dogs. And she'd have to put them into the, into the, super, into the station wagon and bring them back to my mother's house. <laughs> Once, upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, 
Suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. And she roasted my mom in the most amazing way I've ever heard. It made me laugh so hard. Aww. I think we were all sitting in the, in the living room and my mom was sat down on the couch and she said, this, these couches are so uncomfortable. These are such uncomfortable couches. And my Nana turns and she says, oh, you poor thing. And then just returns to watching TV. <laughs> So I just feel like, ultimately, that the foundational memories that we have here of what family means and what holidays mean, like, we're definitely carrying that on into our lives, which is super cool. Aww. Aww. Sweet, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. So we were at the pool, uh, and I've been working out for a long time, and this is like, you know, when I was probably at, you know, like post puberty, probably at my most vulnerable in terms of just like, you know, trying to look good and working out. <laughs> Definitely not at that point anymore. <laughs> but um, I was at the edge of the pool, and Nana just kind of leans over to me and says, Gained a little weight. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, those of you who have met my or met my father know that there's a uh, striking resemblance between me and and my dad. Frightening. Well, frightening. <laughs> I like striking better than frightening. But, but anyway. I thought you were heat. Well, you were not alone in that regard. So I walk in the door, and your mom's sitting, right. and now what is her was her chair, formerly your, your dad's chair, and I walk in the door and she looks at me and her eyes just light up like what you were saying, uh, Rachel, and she goes, Bill, so nice of you to come and see me. And so the whole whole evening she, and then, you know, Phil would say, no, mom, this is your nephew, Frank. Said, oh, Frank, so nice to see you. And the whole evening it was Frank, it was Bill, it was Frank, and it was all good. And, and I just, it didn't matter what she called me. She was happy to see me. And, and it was great that she was so happy to see her brother who'd been gone for, for four years. And I sit down at the table and we're having a wonderful dinner together. And there's this photograph of my dad on the dining room table who looked just frighteningly like me. And, and your mom goes, look, Bill, your picture is on the table. And I pose, I'd pose with a picture of me on the table. And, and, and it's, it's a wonderful memory that, that I will always share. So anyway, those are my wonderful memories. In one of those years, probably 02, 03, well, Dr. Krieger took me aside, asked me specifically to come back to the house to visit once a year. And then he said the most poignant thing, even though he still had more than 10 years left when he was in great health. He just said, time's short. And that was always a lesson that I absorbed. Time is too short to fart around and not to spend time with folks uh, while you still have the chance. But then about a week later, I was actually physically present for dinner. You know, they, they fed me. They didn't know who I was, but they fed me. And, and the, the, uh, the, the topic was wide-ranging and... You know, Dr. Krieger was holding forth like some medieval knight or something like he did, and everyone was having a good time, and for some reason we were talking about Scotland, and he, he out of the blue, he says, who knows what uh, Dr. Boswell said about Scotland? And by pure chance, I'd read this in some high school history text a couple of weeks before, and I said, well, he, he said, I know, he said that there are many fine prospects a Scotsman sees, but the finest is the high road that leads to England. And Dr. Gear says, you, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> and I thought that was the greatest praise I had ever received in my life. <laughs> so think of me, 20 years old, you know, fresh here, brand new graduate student from Columbia. I've never been to California. 
had never been to graduate school before. Everything's new, everything's different, everything's exciting, everything's frightening. Uh, and I met Russ, and we started going out. <laughs> and after a certain amount of time, Russ said, uh, you know, you wanna come over to my parents' house one evening and we'll, we'll watch a movie? And this was, this was a big step. This was, you know, that was, you know, being with the family and everything. And she gave me what she thought were clear-cut instructions on how to get here. And I was just agonizing, you know, how, how do I get there? And I get to the house, and this is the house, and where do I go? And it's big, and it's, and it's got all these trees, and, and is it really this, the place? Is it really where I should be? And uh, I don't know. And you know, it, does she really like me? You know, <laughs> we've only gone out a few times. And and so I, I get to the front door and uh, and I knock, and the door opens, and I see this friendly, welcoming face, and it's Nancy Krieger. And from that moment on, this this was home to me. This, I felt like I had come home. So this uh, this house is is um, is part of me, and the Kriegers are part of me. They're surrogate parents, um, so I can't thank them enough, and I adore their children. So and feel very privileged that um, that I still have them. So it's been a long association with this house since 1956. And I lived in the cottage behind the house for four years during medical school. So um, we'll miss it, but it's given us a good life. Oh, sun-dappled hills of my home. There shall I visit the place of my birth, and they'll give me a welcome, the warmest on earth. So loving and kind, full of music and mirth, in the sweet-sounding language of home. For soon will I see them, O oh, Hero. See them all, see them all. The moment she sat right in my grandpa's chair after he died, because she knew she was the person of the house, and she had to order everyone else around at that point in time. Um, and she did, yeah. And she sat at the head of the table, and she gave the toasts every night, as grandpa did. And, I mean, she just realized that she was taking the place of the person of the family and she did it really well and I don't know I she told me more stories than I'd ever heard in those years of her life and it was I felt privileged to have the time to get to know them cast your eyes up to her sheltering eaves grab a glass pour some wine take a stroll take your ease Hear the wind in the oak as she scatters the leaves. Touch the stucco, the brick, and come home. Oh, soon will I see them, oh, hero. See them, oh, see them, oh, hero. Soon will I see them, the sun-dappled hills of my home. There beat a path to her door, open wide. Up the steps, ring the bell, be invited inside. Her windows alight on a warm summer's night. Shine a path to our family home. Ora, soon will we see them, oh, hero. See them, oh, see them, oh, hero. Soon will we see them. The sun-dappled hills of our home. Now is the time for our exit stage right. 
We can batten the doors and extinguish the light. Leave the ash and the rose dance off into the night. Bid adieu to our forever home. Oh, soon will we see them, oh, See them, oh, see them, oh, Soon will we see them, the sun-dappled hills of our own. Get him, Mom. Yeah. Not to our Sam, I've seen you dance on the table. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not the last.